All right. Second game is up and running at the Aces ROG qualifier number one that we have here today. This is the third round, and we have Satini going up against Suppy, our Zerg player in red starting at the bottom right of the map. This is Star Station, and it is map number two since Suppy was able to win on Belcher Vestige, our first map against the Terran player starting to the top left. Satini already announcing earlier that he had a break from StarCraft that was taking things a little bit uh, low a bit easy and therefore doesn't expect too much in his matches against Sapi but so far in game number one it wasn't looking too bad the problem for him really was that he didn't anticipate Sapi going into such a heavy mutilist commitment and Sapi was actually in a position where he waited a long time if you look at the game in hindsight what Sapi did was just build a few mutilists had like roughly 10 out on the map then he built up a massive massive bank and he waited he got himself an infestation pit and then he just had to make a choice and uh, the choice was do i go for in uh, do i go for a, a couple of mutilists do i go all out of mutilists basically or do i actually head into swarm hosts and he went into a hive tech instead and the reason was that he realized you know what there are not enough thors you don't really have a lot of anti air so if i go for a ground army you might be able to beat that i might be in a very good spot regardless but it's much better for me now to fully commit to me to list, get my upgrades out there and you don't expect me to have this many so I can take your army apart and that's exactly what happened so Tini moved across the map had uh, only four Thors those Thors were taken out by the magic boxing and then there was just nothing he could do anymore game number two on the other hand and uh, starts very similar as we saw in game number one the hatch first for the uh, Zerg player is not really a surprise and I would have been very shocked to see uh, uh, something else than Satini going once again for a straight Reaper here. And that's what we have, of course. Taking that gas, taking that uh, barracks at the beginning, going for the Reaper build, and let's see how that's going to work out for him. Game number one, the start was actually not too bad. And Sapi is heading into gas on his own, so he wants to get the speed upgrade for the Zerglings, wants to get that bit of earlier map control. It really helps against the Reapers, it helps against the Hellions. And Hellions, that's one of the things where Satini was really trying to be a little bit sneaky in game number one as well. Not only going for the mech, but also going straight into Blue Flame Hellion. And Satini, he got, I don't want to say lucky, um, oh, oh, sorry, I don't want to say unlucky. He only got one Marine, and Suppy went with an Overlord into the main base, and he saw the second factory, he saw the add-on, he saw it spinning, he knew exactly what was coming, and the Roach one was already in position, so that was something where Satini just gambled a little bit, went into mech then anyway, so it wasn't uh, like an all-in or anything, but it definitely put him a bit behind, since Sabi didn't really lose a whole lot to all those Hellions. But it was a pretty nice move uh, regardless. So, what we have right now, is uh, not only a command center going up, but basically also the factory again, so the same follow-up that we see for the Terran player at the bottom of the map, just trying to be a bit of a uh, pain with the uh, Reaper, and he could actually take down one of the Zerklings. Bam! 25 minerals right there. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, it's like with the squirrels. One nut at a time. Zerklings, yeah, saved by the Queen. Saved by the bell, you could say. But yeah, the Queen, of course, usually putting an end to uh, the Reaper Harass, unless there's an 8-8 Reaper build, where you go for a massive amount, and then suddenly they kite the uh, Queen into oblivion. Happens every now and then. Oh, but he gets a drone. No! <laughs> the drone. That was a ninja drone. The shot was already on the way, and then the drone just snuck past the shot, dodged it, Matrix style, and built that Spore Crawler. If you haven't seen it, then you should definitely watch the VOD again and should slow down because that's exactly what happened. I'm not kidding. Reapers, this time, double tag team style, going in, trying to play this a little more aggressive, and, yep, killing one drone. So he's trying to put a little bit more pressure on Sapi than he did in game number one. And that's only going to work for the next 10 seconds, since, uh, thanks to Game Heart, we know that the uh, metabolic boost upgrade is about to finish now, and therefore the Reapers will uh, have a very, very tough time going up against this. And Satini wouldn't be Satini if he wouldn't go into the second factory again. Already waiting with the Hellions at the front just in case there's a bit of a circling run by, but not really heavily committing to that in any regard. So, how is he going to play it this time? We had him with the attempt at Blue Flame Hellion attack in game number one. Is he going to go for a similar style, or will we see him just with a completely different opening here? We have him uh, currently just trying to poke at the front a little bit. Yeah, Ling is not the best idea. Lings are fast, Lings can nom nom away, but Lings are also pretty stupid sometimes, and that's exactly what we saw there. You don't go up against two Reapers and two Hellions if you are four Zerglings. 
that is just not going to work. It's not going to be a happy day. So the queens are a little bit sad. All that time, all that injecting, all that taking care of the eggs and the larva is just going to waste because the few zerklings thought they were ultralisks. And yeah, sometimes those kids, right? And uh, well, for now, it's just the normal thing that you see. Just trying to be a little bit aggressive at the front, not really committing to it too much. Taking down at least one of the Reapers, but yeah, paying with a couple of Zerglings. And right now, Sapi is just going for the double evolution chamber at the front. So, what does all that shit do? Basically, it makes sure that Sapi can't really spread his creep as far as he wants. And this time, we had Satini getting in early enough to deny the third base. And that's exactly what he wants. He wanted to make sure that the third base is not going to happen. And if you get in fast enough, then you can it will prevent the drone from moving out. In game number one, didn't really work out for him. Game number two, works like a charm. So right now, Sapi is stuck on two bases. It's not the end of all days. You can get that third base a little bit um, later, but of course he would really like to have that as soon as possible. Especially since we have Satini now also getting a third base. Cheeky as it is, he's hiding it in plain sight, meaning right beneath the Overlord, because he's like, yeah dude, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna move out against my Blue Flame Hellions? Upgrade just about finishing. Oh, I like that, by the way. Bam, in your face, Overlord. Oh, that's actually nice. Just getting one to block that, so... Yeah, Satini right now is just being a bit of an asshole. Like, not in the insulting way, but just being in the way like, dude, I'm gonna do everything that I can to piss you off. And Sapi is probably gonna start to be pissed off quite a bit. The Roaches are gonna help him, and that's the time when, Sap when uh, Satini is gonna move back. But Sapi is not gonna look like at this, and he's like, being like, oh man, really? Oh, no! That was close! Oh my god. Alright, so maybe Satini is not as annoying as he thought he was. But I thought that a lot of these guys would go down. Nah, <laughs> and he goes in and takes down the drone. And now Sapi is like, what? Dude, are you for real? moves in again and yeah the run by on the other hand could shut down a few of the SCVs yet yeah, not quite since we have siege checks on high ground and an SCV yeah killed by friendly fire that SCV died for a good cause I guess but the siege tanks they d didn't show any mercy there the SCV was a sacrificial pawn that was used to get that command center into action and to take a few of the zerglings out so rip SCV Roaches, uh, currently what we see from Suppy, and Roaches are always great against Mech in the early stages, but they scale really badly into the mid game, and especially into the late game when you're going up against a good Mech player. So Spire it is once again. Seems to be like a bit the uh, composition that Suppy is really relying upon when he's facing this style, going into a, a few Mutalists just at the beginning. Oh, we have a commitment! He's running past! Uh, no, he isn't. Nice move by Suppy here. Nice reflexes. Like a panther! He's going for it. Oh, and, uh, well, no, not him. Yeah, those Hellions are also known as YOLO Hellions. There are a couple of regions in the world where you um, could uh, call them emo Hellions. Suicide Hellions. So it depends on where you are. If you're in Korea and you are in NA, then they have different names. But in the end, they all do the same thing. They do jack shit. Um, yeah, they die. And that's it. So nothing that they could really do there. <laughs> Widow Mines against Stationary Overlords. That's one thing uh, that you can always do. But we have three bases now. We have three bases for Satini and uh, looking at the economy, as you can see, we have both of them with a really good income. The Mules coming through for the Terran player here. We have Sapi going for the style that he showed us in the last game. Let's have a quick look. Yep, Spire is done. So a couple of Mutalists. That's what he did in game number one. Ten Mutalists. Evaluating what's going on and then making a decision. Mutalist or Swarm Hosts. And I guess that's what he's going to do this time too. And for Satini, of course, the question being like, what do I do now? Do I go for a heavier commitment to air or what is going to be my next move? In la game number one, I died to just too many Mutalists. I had a pretty, pretty big problem with them and Thor's might be the answer and uh, bigger numbers. I could also go for whatever. Um, fourth base for Sapi on the other hand, and that's the only thing that he really can do. I mean, what else is he going to do? Go full ham on that third base and uh, just sacrifice everything to those siege up tanks? You can't attack into this. Like, this is absolute suicidal. If you want to attack into this, like, you, uh, you, you have dementia. Like, you have Alzheimer's or anything. It's like, you go up and you're like, oh yeah, there were like 50 siege tanks. I forgot about those. Oh, damn. But if you if you have, know what you scouted, then you're not going up against this. You're trying to try to keep them low. You're going to try to keep them on three bases. You're going to move out, take your bases, spread your creep, and go for double spire? Look at that. That's not a mistake. Like, there's no way this is a mistake. So we have 
infestation bit coming up and apparently the idea of getting double upgrades interesting didn't see that one coming something that we had in rings of liberty like a long time ago like really really long time double upgrades against mech nurture did it back then that was a that was nurture on uh like he did that a couple of times ask goody he knows but yeah, so going into a double spy, that's quite interesting. I, I, it might be a mistake. I really want to see if he goes for the double upgrades or if he was on autopilot. But it should be double upgrades. Like, really, why? I don't think you get that spy. Like, not even by mistake if you're in this spot. Goes into the hive tech again. Has the flyer's carapace. And uh, let's see. Are we going to see the double up? I'm really curious right now. This This is really, like, keeping me busy. I want to see if that's going to be the case. Let's have a quick look at the composition before we have another closer at the upgrade policy of Suppy. Thor's 7 in total, has one Viking and the Raven. The Raven, of course, for the point defense drawn here. And yeah, we have the double upgrades. Very nice. All right, haven't seen that in a long, long time. But with 8 gas and getting number 9 and number 10, he can certainly afford it. And that might be the one thing that he needs. So, creep spread is pretty decent. Army supply, on the other hand, massively in favor of Satini, which is why we now have the 23 Mutalists. So, this is exactly what we saw in the earlier game. Bank money, make your choices, maybe you get even to Hive Tech and you can get something else into the picture, whatever. And then you go for Mutalists and you go for a massive amount of them. But this time we have a lot of more Thors and maybe... Like, how many are we going to have? We have, like, 34 against against 8 Thors. And the double point even strong since we by now have also 2 Ravens. So, to be quite honest with you, I don't think that Suppy has such an easy time as he did in game number 1 with this army now. This is looking pretty scary. He could go for counter-aggression on the other hand. And that's something where, with the immobile army that Satini has, it's going to look like, oh boy, that thing was down in a second. So, here we go now. We have a couple of missile turrets everywhere. He's building four more in his main base. We uh, that he's going for the base race here, and you know that Thor army. You don't stop that. That is just that is just going to roll across the map. This is the pain train. The pain train is going to roll across the map right now and do his thing. The question is, how many missile turrets are we going to have? He needs more than that, and he has the money. Satini built missile turrets and built them fast. Like only having one or two, that's absolutely suicidal. So, not quite sure, but that is going to get very ugly here. And Thors are moving in. That's a lot of spine crawlers. So, Thors are moving in everywhere. Base after base is going down here. And Satini is looking at a position where he is falling in army supply. He has a lot of money, but he doesn't have the gas. The minerals are not the problem. Gas intense. Uh, gas, that's the issue. The problem that I see is that with the mobility that Sapi has, Satini is going to have a very, very tough time to really win this game. The base race is going to be brutal, but we have a siege tank now. We have Thors coming in, so this should be... He should be able to hold this, and he will. So, to be frank, I mean, Satini is doing this quite smart. He needs to uh, get those units a bit in a uh, better position. But if he... Yeah, take down those... Uh, Mutalists, bam, in your face. I mean, there we go. Oh, and now it's a party. Here we go, and he needs to get those shots off. And that's exactly what we see moving back a little bit. And this is all there is. We have the magic boxing going on. The Thors are doing a lot of damage, but they don't do enough. We have the upgrades through two armor. Two armor and armor versus Thors is great. It's absolutely amazing. You need more point defense drones in this situation. And why exactly is armor so amazing against Thors? Thors do 4 damage against air, and this means if you have like 2 armor upgrades, then they reduce per single rocket by 2. So that's 8 damage reduced per attack per Thor, and that is pretty, pretty sick. So, that was a pretty cool move. And right now, what's the Thor count? We still have enough, and there are of course all of those additional missile turrets, and they are basically what keep them in the game. But a lot of damage has been done. Main base not erased. Tech is intact. We have the hatch being built, but so far only one mining base. One mining base against... Uh, let's give him two and a half. So having a quick look at it, Sapi is still ahead, but this is going to increase in a second since we have SCVs sliding over. And in terms of army supply, 66 versus 57. So this game is not over. This game is not over just yet. And... Uh, hmm... Let's see, what else do we have? Still good creep spread on the map. Can't be happy to see that as a Terran player. We have uh, more bases being built, more bases mining, and a massive amount of spine corners. Whereas Sapi is just trying to find an opening, and he found one uh, 
This is like where is Waldo? It's just the opposite. It's like where are no missile turrets? And uh, yeah, he found the spot. So it can move in and uh, can immediately do some damage, force it back, force a teeny into passi uh, pa um, what? passivity. There we go. Uh, whereas we have the transition into uh, the locusts. Because what do we have now? We have Satini going for more Thors because he sees a massive amount of mutilisks. What is absolutely great against Thors or what are Thors absolutely shitty against? Yep, locusts. They really suck against those. So getting a couple of those into the game, brilliant idea. And uh, while the star pods are being attacked, and Thors being uh, as slow as they are, until they get their way over there, the mutilists do enough damage to really make it worth it. So. We even have the look at the creep spread. Look at that creep spread. That is like that is nearly Scarlet style. This is like oh yeah, well you have creep and uh, it's pretty close I guess. So if you want to clear that map, you have to drop so many scans that you should be really careful. If a marine is present every single time that a scan is being dropped in this game to clear the creep, he's going to catch so much radiation he's just going to die. He will be scanned to death. It's like uh, if you get like an, an x-ray. It's like minimal, but if you overdo it, then you're just going to bite it. And that would happen if there would be a marine, which is not the case, by the way. We don't have a single one. Greater Spy, on the other hand, we have uh, one of those coming up and also more upgrades. So, uh, yeah. Suppy is just... A lot of creep tumors, by the way. Suppy is just playing this super safe now, and he wants this game. He wants this game. He wants this win. He doesn't want to go up in, uh, against Tini in the third game. And he has a pretty good chance to really win it. I mean, how much do we have now? Let's have a quick look at this. Let's do a quick inventory. We have 18 Mutalists. We have 13 Swarm Hosts, which is disgusting in itself. Then we have already the five queens, and there is not a whole lot for uh, for Satini, who now has to switch back into a few more siege tanks. And uh, well, one SCV now, two SCV, three SCV, five. Look at all those locusts moving in. That's just nothing gonna happen here. Mutalists are still moving across the map. Ooh, careful. That's l like an A move at the wrong position is what could you lose you the game. But like with the mobility of the mutalists, with the swarm hoes. Low, getting those locusts into the picture. Satini realizes, alright, this is over. Types the GG, he's never gonna get that fourth base. The third is difficult enough to hold, so game over. Sapi takes it with a 2-0 at the ACE RG qualifier and goes on to round number four.